chapter 2, verse 52. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature, in favor with God and man. As you follow the Savior's pattern of growth, you will find that you will find yourself growing in God's favor. I want you to, you can take your seat now. I want you to write down wisdom, stature, and favor. These three things. Wisdom, stature, and favor. These things are very important. I acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit is awesome here. And Jesus is so powerful in this place. And also it's good to see my friend and uh, our assistant, his assistant, uh, Apostle Ruth. Will you stand up please? I know it's a, it's a blessing. She's a wonderful woman of God. So, and at the end of the meeting, of course, we're going to have her and uh, Pastor Manny also shares something. He always has something in his heart. And welcome, Kai, today. That's wonderful. First and foremost, next week we are asking uh, the First Lady from a certain nation. Uh, as you know that God has blessed us with heads of states that come to visit us, some privately, some publicly, but this one is the, you know, it's, uh, next week, so we, I want you to keep me in prayer and, and keep uh, uh, the first lady from one nation of Africa coming to visit me specifically and and I'll ask you, some of you, to be with me as we, as we believe God for the nation. You know, the Bible talks about, I'll give you the, the nations as your inheritances. How does God give you nations as inheritances? He gives you the hearts of kings. Because kings control state, control cities, control the nations. And God has been blessing us like that. Uh, not too long ago, me and uh, Adam, we had the opportunity to pray for the vice president of uh, Zambia. And it was awesome. The presence of God was awesome. I'll need you again, Adam, next week. Uh, I'll send you some of you the, the 10 lead. Um, yeah, we, we have quite a lot of people who want to come and visit us. Uh, so when we move our own building, we're going to have Heidi Baker there. We're going to have Roland Baker as well and many others that want to visit us. But meanwhile, I just want to say that because I said it last week. And because I'll be asking some of you to, to be with me next week as uh, we minister. Um, and uh, not, not only the First Lady is coming of the country, of the African country, but also I have other people that are very powerful that are going to come and we want to spend time to minister. The most important thing is not to necessarily meet these wonderful people who are big Jews or what, is to minister to them so they can minister others. You see, one thing about the gospel, Apostle Luth, is that people love to teach it, but they don't like doing it. It's the same. People love to cut, to preach the gospel, but they don't like casting out demons. People, love, they say, go and preach the gospel. The Bible says, as you go to preach the gospel, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the day, and cast out devils. It's part of the command. But the watered down gospel is that you can't heal the sick. You can't cast out devils. It's the same gospel has never changed. I want us to be authentic people that call it a miraculous power. I'm telling you, we're living in the dangerous world where 
even some of medications we take that are weaponized to destroy us. Different things are weaponized to destroy us. So we need this invisible war that takes place in the realm of the spirit to destroy humanity. But it will affect the world, but not you who is a child of God. That's why we need to activate the faith of Jesus. We need to activate the word of God. We need to walk with Jesus. We need to be the answer. When they say this situation cannot be cured, say Jesus can cure. This situation cannot be solved. Jesus can solve. I believe that we are, we are, we are at the time that God is releasing a new breed of believers. That we we'll walk in the wisdom of God and in the stage of God and, and in the favor of God. Amen. And I'm so happy to see Pastor Sam is one of our pastors of the, this ministry, but extended into uh, uh, Kansas City, Missouri. Pastor Sam, you can stand up. He was really prayer. That was wonderful. So some of you may not know we have ministries all over. And, you know, we have two ministries in that that we are connected to in Palm Spring. Pastor Shannon, Sharon who is watching, and also Dr. Terry Wallen. We have a couple ministries that we're connected to. Amen. And, and we just want to be, you know, we don't want to control anybody. We just want to pray for them and say, what is it that Jesus has put in you? We want to we wanna learn with you. We want to encourage you. Finish the list. Well, amen. Not to try to, to, to hinder you or trump on you. No, 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 no. We're trying to resurrect you where the devil has buried you. To say, come back, Lazarus, and manifest the glory of God. I just prophesied to the church. The church is like a dead Lazarus, no? It needs to come out of the grave today. Yeah, it needs to come out of, and it's stinky, and it needs to come out of stinky, and it needs to come out of all that, you know? One thing is that you know, I like saying whatever Jesus said in my mind. But but you must understand that what is wisdom? Wisdom is the ability to apply what God has given you. Wisdom is the ability to use what God has put inside you. Wisdom is the ability. strategize with God what is God doing in your life and how can you produce what God has put inside you ability to identify your enemies wisdom is also ability to identify your enemies who are your enemies and who are not your enemies thank you Adam Adam is amazing so wisdom is the ability to know who are your friends and who are not your friends. Wisdom can help you to choose who are for you, not for you. 
wisdom helps you to how to be ahead without doing anything. Pride can make you do so many foolish things just to try and prove, prove something and do something. And wisdom makes you secure that. And what God has given you, no devil in hell can take it away. That's how powerful. Wisdom is also discerning power. Knowing God's power. I understand even how to use kingdom finances. Wisdom Oh, it went out. Is it still there? Okay, it looks like I still have a signal here. That's wisdom to stop and check. <laughs> <laughs> Not just talking and then, then our audience, our other invisible audience there, invisible. they're not. <laughs> They are missing out. We don't want them to miss out. Wisdom is they must hear properly. Is the sound good there? You can text me again. Make sure the sound is good. All right. So let, let me again repeat some things. Wisdom gives you strategy how to handle difficult people. Did you hear what I'm saying? Wisdom gives you the ability to identify who are your friends and who are not your friends. Wisdom gives you the discernment where you should not, we should put your money and where you should not put your money. Wisdom helps you to differentiate who you should work for and who you should not work for. Or you should work with and you should not work with because wisdom chooses the quality of friendship and relationship you have is the quality of life you're going to have people bring blessings and also they can bring problems so when you have good people around you things are going to go well wisdom is also the ability not to bow down to the current situation. No matter how impossible is it, wisdom is to give you the eyes to see your tomorrow, even when your today looks doom. It can be a doom day, but tomorrow is a glory day. Wisdom is so powerful can help you to position yourself collectively where you're going to be in years to come. Wisdom will help you to minister the right message to the right people. It takes the wisdom of God to minister the right sermon. Wisdom will help you to be at the right place at the right time. And wisdom will serve you to be absent from the wrong people. Wisdom will bring the fear of the Lord on you and your children. Wisdom will help you to discern wickedness and deceitfulness. Wisdom is ability to make you know the lie and the truth. That's how deep wisdom is. So Jesus grew in wisdom to the point where when he looked at the, uh, the hearts of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, he knew, the Bible says, he discerned what was in their hearts. That word discern, it's distinction. He had the wisdom of knowing 
how to deal with those people because he knew what was in their hearts. Can you imagine what will happen to you when you walk in such wisdom? You begin to develop a quality of life. You begin to walk in victory, not in failure. God wants you to be victorious every day of your life. It's not that God allowed me to fail so I can learn. No, God wants you to win every time. Of course, we make mistakes because of our flesh. But we should not keep blaming our flesh. Instead, we need just to repent. Instead of blaming your flesh, my flesh, my flesh, repent. Wisdom leads you to the place of repentance. To say, Lord, I repent. Help me to start again. Lord, give me a second chance. Or a, a thousand time chance. <laughs> Whatever chance it is. God wants to give you that opportunity. And also wisdom will help you to handle corridors of power. Or protocols of power. How to handle presidents, kings. How to handle celebrities. How to handle CEOs. Some people do not know how to handle certain character of people. As a result, they lose the opportunity. One of these days, I'm going to teach about how to handle political powers and how to handle celebrity power and how to handle people in authority, how to talk and not to say, what to say, not to say. Some people just talk, 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 they don't understand. The, the certain people have been trained, their mind have been programmed a certain way. Influential people have been trained a certain way in their thinking. And poor people, they have adopted the training in a certain way. And average people, they have obtained a certain level of thinking. So you find that sometimes when you meet CEOs of certain people that are very high up there, you disconnect in your mind. Because there is no communication. You don't know how to communicate. You don't know how to relate. As a result, it affects your evangelism strategy you cannot reach out to certain people cannot reach to certain people but i want you to be multi-dimensional multi-cultural i want you to be able to reach out to to the to the to the most famous person on earth and to the most infamous person on earth both of them you should you can't say oh, i can only witness the celebrities no you should be able to witness to them to a homeless person who sleeps in the street as well. You should help their mental mind, how they can receive a spiritual mind so they can get out of that prison that the enemy has put them. And also the wealthy people, they have their own demons, demons of pride, demons of greed, and there are other things, how they can get out of that so that they can have a balanced life. So there is demons in different levels, and we, but don't call them demons, they just... They, you just call them uh, different obstacles, different circumstances in every, in every person that you encounter. And you need the wisdom of the Lord. Don't ever tell a wealthy man, you have demons, let me cast out of you. They, they have so much money. They feel even the devil cannot touch them. They have security around them. Now you're telling them they have a demon. Just have to say, sir, I, I really see there's a struggle in one area of your life. And God can help remove that problem. Then, then, it, then you say, yeah, though no, I see. Okay, yeah, I have that problem. Then you just say, you mountain move and guess what that mountain will move because Jesus said you will move what mountains don't just go oh, you devil come out <laughs> can't you see my Lamborghini outside you're calling me devil can't you see my my jet outside you're calling me devil can't you see how wealthy everybody praises me you're calling me devil understand the language it's easy to minister to the poor. You can tell the poor you have devil. Please take it away. I don't, I don't want it. 
you know, you know. But when you're on the certain level, you have to change the language. When you change your language, you win. Jesus knew the language to speak to the Sadducees and to the Pharisees and to the Romans and to the Greeks. That's why he grew in wisdom. Now he grew in stature because he grew in respect. He was a respectful person. Now he grew in favor. He had favor with God and man. It's important for people to like you, but you cannot force them to like you. Do you know what is a most endurance thing in a, a common thing according to my personal studies? Attitude, it's everything. You have a bad attitude, doesn't matter how much nice cologne you've put on. You can put on the best one that I invented called fragrance of favor or wonderful favor or whatever type of that's a cologne I've invented, but it's good by the way. It's it's all organic, it's all the best, but it, 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 it will help you smell good, but but it's not going to take your attitude. I smell good, but your attitude doesn't smell good. That becomes a problem. Now, how do you change the attitude? Learn to have interest in people. Don't be always I. Always say, Hector, how can I serve you? What can I do for you, dear? Always put people first. Have that attitude. There's, there's a glass of water. Do you want to drink some water? Okay, there's no water for you. I'm just saying the attitude, the way you approach. It is that attitude actually will cause you to enter into doors that education cannot help you enter. You may be smart, you may have degrees, you may have everything, but if your attitude is wrong, you're always judging people, you're always... I was just talking uh, to Pastor Sami, some of the keys to increase in the anointing. I said, is to honor the anointing. Some of the keys to increase in healing is to honor the healing. When God heals an addict, rejoice and do not take it for granted. Then God is going to trust you to heal cancer, rejoice. Then God is going to trust you to raise somebody from the dead. But if you just say, oh, it's just an addict, that's all right. No, no, thank you for healing my sister from the addict or my brother from the addict. Thank you, God. Don't just bow because of big things. Start bowing to God even in small things. Most people, God stops talking to them because they start ignoring God in small things. The only one to listen to God in big things. But I can tell you the secret of sharpening the voice of God is being open to what God is saying, even the smallest thing. One time I was in Trader Joe's and I didn't want to, I don't, have you ever felt you don't want to spend anything and you have calculated your money to the penny? So, I didn't want to spend any money and then I hear the Lord say, it's that woman in front of you you need to pay for a grocery. I said, God, looks like she got a lot of groceries. It, it, you know, it's not, it's, it's not a regular thing that you hear, you know, but... You know, it has never happened. God has never told me that way. Uh, you know, I'm in Trader Joe's or all food most of the time to buy my food, you know. But he has never said do that. But one time I was in Trader Joe's and the Lord said, I want you to pay for her. Clear, small and simple. But I knew it was the Lord. I would have ignored it because it wasn't that like bumping strong. Do it or you die. No. It was like she needs your help. You need to take care of her baby. And I wrote. And for sure, when she, when I, I almost delayed, I almost delayed my blessing. Because I was still thinking, is it my compassion, my mercy, or is this God? Is it really you, God? But I knew it was God, but I still wanted to question him because it involved money. Then, 
Then I said, who cares if I hear God or I don't hear God? I, I just, I, I, I will be happy I obeyed God. Then I just went to the lady and said, lady, but she had already given a credit card. And guess what? They swapped it. It, 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 it declined. And quickly, like a movie, I <laughs> gave him the credit, my credit card. I said, can you use this one for her and me as well? Then the lady looked at me. I said, yes. Then the man looked at me. Are you sure? I said, please do it. And, and I swapped it. Then it went through. And the lady was like, an angel or what because I left my other card at home the one I have has no money and I said I love Jesus and Jesus loves you she said but are you an angel or what let me know when God uses you don't try to explain yourself learn as much as you can be an angel as you can. <laughs> so what I did is that I'm just so happy that I was able to do it. And, uh, and I left and I lifted my card up to heaven and said, thank you Lord for the ability to pay. Thank you for the ability that my process was approved. Thank you Jesus. I began to thank God. It looks foolish but it was very important that very moment when I, when I, when I saw how the lady, it, how important it was for our card to get approved, for the, for the patches to succeed. I saw how important, because you would have seen her face, you would have seen she wanted to dance and do anything, but I quickly ran out as much as I can, because I was only getting some coconut water and some few stuff, so it was a quick to run away. And I think the Lord sent me there just for her. Because for some reason I felt like, oh, I'm a trainer, Joseph. Maybe I can get some coconut water. <laughs> then afterwards I realized I didn't need to go to, to Trader Joe's today. I already have the food at home. But, but it was God leading me. But you know what happens? After I did that, few days I received a good check from an old friend who doesn't even talk to me. He said, today I was in prayer. You remember that prayer you prayed for me? That business still went through so I just decided to, to bless you personally. And it was a good blessing. And good blessing enough to take you for vacation back and, and be laughing every day and saying thank you Jesus. Then I said, then the Lord reminded me, obedience activates your own personal breakthrough. It, this is a bad statement, but don't use it, but I pray that God can help you. God said, you did it, son. I said, how? You did it, son. I did not do it. You did it. Then I said, how? Remember when you had Trader Joe's? I said, I did it? Yes, you did it. So I did not perform this miracle. You performed this miracle. Then I, then I said, if you refuse my voice there, this miracle will not happen. God wants you to go and do something for him. I pray that you're going to rise up and do something for him. And he's going to say, you did it, my daughter. You did it, my son. And now you can enter into your promised land. You can get that breakthrough. You can go higher wherever you want to go in your life. You see, when you obey God, you grow into his wisdom. Wisdom also is to discern when to say no and when to say yes. It takes the wisdom of God. Now, 
growing in the favor of God, it starts with intimacy with God. Do not seek favor with God. Seek knowing God. When you know God, automatically God will give you favor. Most people seek miracles and fast for miracles, so they don't see miracles. Just seek God, and He will come back to you loaded with His miracles and with His blessings and with everything that you need. God can heal every disease. God can provide every need. God can change around every situation. God can protect you from the dangers or the powers of darkness. God can rescue you. Can doesn't matter how deeper the darkness has taken you. God's hand can get you out of the thick darkness. Can reach out to the impossible places and bring you to the light and make you the light. Never doubt God. Doubting God is stopping your blessing. Doubting God is stopping your blessing. One time, I love the relationship I have with the Lord. And I pray daily that it keep growing and becoming even bigger and bigger and greater and greater, whatever you can call it. One time, I was asking God for something. Then I doubted. Then the Lord said, son, why did you believe to me? Then I said, I did it, but I didn't know you could do it. He says, every time you say you don't know you, I can do it, you are belittling me. And I said, Lord, forgive me. I repent from belittling me. You need to know that God can serve you in relationship, can serve you ministry can change everything. Everything. And God will cause your enemies to bless you. Never have a dying mind. Always have a mind of living. Because you don't save a dead God, but a living God. To activate favor is knowing that God owns everyone and everything and is able to put you in front of anyone that carries your, your blessing or a destiny helper. Not every person is meant for you to meet. It's only certain people that are meant you to me because because people love me they know they want they're trying to get into the zoom and now they're calling me <laughs> that's wonderful i love it you know you already accepted them adam because <laughs> we still have that security zoom on it anyway i don't I don't want to keep you all night, but you must understand something about favor. Favor will never make you lose, but favor will make you get even something you don't deserve. Favor will cause you to become a prominent man and a prominent woman even without being qualified for. Favor can cause people to serve your cause, your mission. Favor can provoke people to bless you with exactly the blessing that you need. You don't need every blessing. Certain blessings are for other people. There are certain blessings I don't want. But there are certain blessings I want. Because we are all tailored 
for a certain blessing. Do you understand what I mean? Some people like pink paper, pink air, but they want to bring God bless me with the with with the air stylish. Who knows how to do pink hair? The other one says, I don't like pink hair. I love black hair. The other one, I don't like black hair. I love blonde hair. The other one said, I don't like blonde hair. I like brunette hair. So you they say an angel, and an angel for the pink hair shows up and gives you everyone pink. You you're gonna you're gonna say, Lord, I, it's a blessing for one, but not for me. It's the same. Um, I was in the service one time in uh, New Zealand. Praise God, I honor that miracle. Uh, a miracle happened. Somebody who did not have teeth, he had gold teeth popped right into their mouth. I still have those old videos. That was my first time to see God performing a miracle of giving people gold teeth. I mean real gold. I think we endangered that person. I don't know the lovers they would like to remove those teeth. <laughs> because it's pure gold, you know? And it's gold from heaven. But also there's a protection. Whenever there's a blessing, there's a protection for your blessing. So the enemy cannot steal. When I saw that miracle, I was in one place. God, I was saying, Dental miracles. I was expecting some gold teeth to pop up in some people's mouth, right? One lady said, not gold in my mouth. I don't need any metal. I just need original teeth, Lord. And he did pop up the original teeth. So if I prayed for the gold teeth, she didn't want the gold teeth. But there are other Chinese man. My goodness, he loved his gold teeth. After the miracle happened, the second day, his family, oh, he flew his entire family from Thailand to New Zealand. That's why, I was, that's why the miracle happened. And, and we had a banquet in the private room before the service. He says, this is the man who blessed me with his beautiful teeth. He was saying, can you see this teeth in Chinese? I need to find that video, actually. It's so, so funny. We video called it. We video tapped it. It was really amazing. And, and every family member says, how did you do that? I said, I don't know. Then I said, oh, I've read in the book of Revelation that heaven is full of the streets of gold. So I'm sure the heavens open and just drop some pieces of gold in his mouth. There's so much gold up, up there. So there was so much gold that, that, that some of uh, uh, gold nuts from, nuggets from heaven, they just dropped into his mouth. Maybe he was worshiping with his mouth open. So, I mean, they'll fill him. And there's a scripture that says, open your mouth and I'll fill you with blessings. So maybe that's what happened. I don't know what happened. I don't know. Maybe she was just worshiping. Oh, he was just worshiping with his mouth open because the Bible says, open your mouth and I'll fill you in. You know that scripture? So, I just, it was a miracle for him. It was a miracle for me. And to God be the glory. Amen? And I'm telling you tonight, God is about to do God and blessings. He's about to release gold into your mouth. Gold into your mouth bank account, gold into every area of your life. Gold also symbolizes the presence of God. The presence of God. The, 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 the gold, G-O-L-D. It's a, it's a symbol of wisdom and it's a symbol of the presence of God and it's a symbol of wealth. By the way, whenever the presence of Jesus comes, he, he, the presence of Jesus attracts wealth, not poverty. The presence of Jesus attracts healing, not sickness. The presence of Jesus attracts favor, not hatred. The presence of Jesus releases healing of the soul. The wounded soul gets healed. The presence of God brings salvation, deliverance, healing. The presence of God casts out devils, generational curses are destroyed. That's what the presence of God 
does in your life get you dead, get you dead into his presence and you have everything ever desired. Amen. Let's just stand to our feet right now and just heal ourselves. You know, well, I know next week, we, it's, a, it's a busy week next week. Um, but, but I just want you to just heal yourself. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the pillars of gold, for the pillars of wisdom. Thank you for the pillars of wisdom, for diamonds of heaven that has been released in this place. Thank you for the glory of God. Hector, the Lord says to you, your struggles are over. You are end, you have they, one struggle has ended and another victory has begun. One chapter has closed, another chapter has opened. The Lord says, I'm taking you to the places of provision, to the places of favor, to the places of increase. The Lord says, I'm going to use you and I'm going to touch your son to preach the gospel. He will never touch the drugs because I'm touching him. I'm delivering him. Yes, the enemy has been trying to steal him from you. But the Lord says, because of your prayer, because of your prayer, the glory, the glory, the glory of God, the glory of God. Do not forget his beautiful wife, glory of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, the Lord says, I'm doing a great work on the behalf of your son. Your son, I mean your biological son. God is reaching out to your son. God is reaching out to your son. Gangsters have been trying to get a hold of him. Bad groups have been trying to get a hold of him. But there have been angels visiting him. There have been, there have been the presence of God has been visiting him. And he could not resist it anymore. And he's going to say, Daddy, something has changed in me. I need Jesus. I want to serve Jesus. I want to die for Jesus. The Lord says, I am doing something new in your life. Even in this life, you as a couple, the Lord says, you shall be a power couple. Yes, there have been differences. Yes, there have been misunderstanding. But the Lord says, I have used them to build you up. I have used them so you can get you did uh, to my presence and to my glory in order for this relationship uh, in order for this marriage to survive or, or become alive it will depend on the presence of God and the Lord says uh, as you commit as a couple to the presence of Jehovah God and the presence of the Lord in this couple shall touch other couples and shall touch other people and I shall cause you to minister the gospel I shall cause you to preach the gospel I'm doing something new something fresh the Lord says to you that yes you have gone through a lot of strange things in your life but the Lord says it's from those strange things that I'll do mighty things from those things that look impossible I'll cause possible things to happen I'm doing a miracle in you I'm doing a deliverance in you I'm doing a healing in you he says not many days from now you shall be visited by my glory you shall be visited my power my power shall visit you says the Lord my presence shall visit you says the Lord this is the time for my glory says the Lord because you have desired me I have visited you I have visited you I am visiting you because you have been desiring my presence the Lord says tonight I'm patting red seas I'm changing situations I'm changing things that could not be changed for you apostle the Lord the Lord says increase upon your ministry yes it has been a time a time a time of things have not worked well.
But the Lord says, I've not forgotten you. The Lord says, I sent you tonight because tonight it's a night of breakthrough. It's a night of promotion. I'll take you to places you have never been before. I'll cause you to preach places of never you've never preached before. I'm bringing new sons and new daughters that they shall call you mama. And the Lord says, your ministry shall increase your prophetic your prophetic destiny is being. Woo. The Lord says, there's a prophetic destiny on you. The reason why the enemy has fought you so hard. Because of the greater the anointing to raise the gate. The greater the anointing to touch the billions of souls. The Lord says, I've not forgotten your media. Your media, I've not forgotten the anointing for media. And I see you being interviewed by CNN. I see you being interviewed by, by main, main, major, major, major medias. Major medias. They'll call you. And the Lord says, you shall be a testimony. I'm building a testimony. You shall be a testimony. I'll cause your, your shadow even to heal the sick. I'll cause your voice to cast out devils. I'll put levers for you, says the Lord. Oh, but let's see for you, says the Lord. There is increase in authority. There is increase in authority. The Lord says from this day forth, people shall know your name. They shall know your name because he has seen your tears. He has seen your cry. And some people have condemned you. Some people have looked down on you. But the Lord says tonight, I am putting my oil on you. Tonight, I'm putting my favor on you. Tonight, I'm putting my grace tonight. And the grace to, to progress, the grace to multiply. Because my power that comes upon you right now, the power of the Holy Ghost, that is opening the portals of glory, is coming upon your life right now. Woman of God, give God a praise. Thank you, Father. Give me the praise and the glory. Thank you for your praises. Thank you for your glory. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord says, I'm bringing a husband to you. And I am releasing the anointing for finances, for entrepreneurship, and for ministry. The Lord says there is a music inside you that has been not yet released. There is music inside you that are not yet to be released. And the Lord says, my power and my glory is coming upon you right now. Father, we thank you. We give you the glory and the honor. Yes. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for the presence of Jesus. Lord, I refuse to be dry. Yes. I refuse to be lukewarm. Cause us to be on fire. The church is in trouble. The world is in trouble. There are diseases that have been created by man that can only be cured by you. And the Lord says today, any incurable sickness is being cured right now. Every incurable sickness is being cured right now. The Lord says, I'm sending cure to you. I'm curing you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lorna, I see a healing angel all around you. To somebody to stand behind her. The Lord says, because you have desired my presence. You have been seeking my presence. I have sent my healing angel. My presence of healing. Of Jehovah. Jehovah. My healer. The healing presence is healing every fiber of your being right now. And the Lord says, not only are you getting healed, but also I'm activating your spiritual gifts. You begin to dream like you've never dreamt. You begin to hear my voice like you've never heard. And the Lord says, you will have the vision of the day and the vision of the night. You will experience my peace and my glory. And I rebuke that dark spirit of death. Out! 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 I speak life upon your life. And the Lord says, you shall live and not die. You shall live and not die. And declare, 
you shall be the mouth of the Lord, and you shall be the eyes of the Lord. You shall see, and you shall speak. Take the glory from the glory, Jesus. Take the glory from the glory, Jesus. Father, we give you the praise and the glory for today. We thank you that we cannot do anything without you. We thank you for your presence. Lord, we just surrender and repent for not trusting you. We repent from not believing in you in the way we're supposed to believe in you. We repent for putting you in the bottom, Lord. For belittling you. Lord, we pray that today our faith shall be big. Bigger than ourselves. Lord, I pray that we shall be ministers that will minister healing. They shall minister deliverance. They shall minister blessings and favor. We shall preach the gospel. We shall cast out devils. And we shall cleanse the lepers. We shall cleanse lepers. We shall raise the dead. Father, pray that we shall not just be people that preach, but we shall be practitioners of God's word. Practitioners of God's word. I see another wave. Raise your hands. Just receive this wave. Father, we thank you for healing wave. The Lord says, this healing wave is protection wave. <laughs> protection wave. Thank you for the wave of healing. Thank you for protection wave. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for protection wave. Thank you for protection wave. Protect our spirit. Protect our soul. Protect our mind. Protect our blood. In the name of Jesus. Healing wave. The umbrella of God's blessing. Enter into his umbrella of God's blessing. Enter into his wave of blessings. Into his wave of blessing. Waves of healing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I see light all over you. Growth, our Lord. With the beauty of God's glory. You know, there are times you can have no words. But just that cloth of heaven. It cloths us. Father we praise you. And Lord we just pray. Even for next week Lord. We, even as we. Ask the head of. One of the African country. And many powerful people. We pray that Lord. Will, will be careful to. Give you the glory. And be able to minister to the hearts of kings. That I have responsibilities for millions of people under them. Help us to be your voice. Help us to be your voice. And Lord, anoint even the people that will, in some of this group that will be with us as we minister to them. We thank you for sending presidents and kings to us. Because, Lord, you said in your word, kings will come to you. Indeed, we are seeing this scripture fulfilled. We are seeing kings coming to us. Lord, we pray that you continue to give us nations as our inheritances. Just as you have given me the nation of America. And, Lord, you are going to give some of your people the nation of Africa. Nations of Africa. Nations of Asia nations of Europe. Lord, I pray that you cause us to inherit 